Hello, learners, Mr. G here. Um, I want to do a video on Newton's second law regarding the experiment. One of my learners asked me to do so, and then I'll try to do it to, to help. Uh, my voice is very damaged, so I'm extremely sorry about that. I'll try to speak soft, and I hope it helps. This question states, learners in school were requested to achieve the following outcome. Learners should be able to use graphical method to determine how the acceleration of an object to which a constant force is applied varies with the changing in mass. In this experiment, you can see from this part that what is requested, what is requested is the um, relationship between um, acceleration, determine how the acceleration of an object um, to which a constant force is applied varies with changing in mass. So acceleration versus a mass. This is the idea of the experiment. They want to know what is the relationship between the relationship between acceleration and mass. That is the main idea of this question. Okay. In order to do this, Kichev conducted the following experiment or conducted the following experiment. He first accelerated one, then two, and lastly three identical trolling mass. So you can see that the learner changes the mass. The learner was increasing the mass as he repeated the experiment um, down a frictionless compensated track. Remember also from the experiment, a frictionless compensated track means that the track is being inclined like you have it um, here. You can see in this track that is an inclination and that was done um, when the object was moving at constant velocity and that was exactly to compensate, to compensate for friction. Frictionless compensated track. Kichev used a meter ruler and an elastic cord stretched to the same length and at the same angle to which the of the three situation in order to maintain a constant force. So force was keep constant. Now this learner, once more, we're going back, want to study the relationship between acceleration and mass. And that is regarding Newton's second law. Okay? Now this learner, this is what the picture of what the learner did. He has three tall trolleys here. Then he was repeating the experiment. First he did it with only one trolley. Then he did it with two trolleys. And lastly he did repeat the experiment with the three tall trolleys. Okay? The acceleration versus mass graph is this one. And the um, data was recorded in this uh, specific table. Okay? In one of the, in the first column you can see the masses, one, one car two cars and three cars, which correspond to the kilograms, one, two, and three kilograms. And then they recorded the acceleration for each of the uh, different situations. How it was done is not shown in the, in the work, it's not important right now. The thing is they, they record the data, and here is the, um, the graph that the learner plotted. Now, if we carry on, the question say, in order to obtain a relationship between acceleration and mass, remember, this is the main idea of the experiment. Obtain the relationship between acceleration and mass. It is necessary to plot a graph which tends to produce a straight line. You can see here that the line is not straight, it's a curve. And you can see that as one um, decreases, as the acceleration is going down, so does the mass increases, or the other way around. As the mass increases, the acceleration decreases. So the, relations, uh, the relationship is inversed. How can we fix that one? Well, it's simple. We find out the relationship between acceleration and the inverse of the mass. So we have to know the relationship between acceleration and the inverse of the mass, which is 1 over m. So what we are going to do now is to do this calculation for each of the cases, right? I'm going to redraw this table there um, and I'm going to be back with you when the table is draw. Just give me uh, one second. All right, here we are back. This is exactly the same table, but we are going to include now one over mass. So for the first row, you have one over mass, which is equal to one over one and is equal to one. So here is going to be one. For the second, you have one over mass and we have 1 over 2, and that gives you 0, 0,5. So here is 0, 0,5. And then for the last one, we have 1 over mass, which is 1 
over 3 and that is equal to 1, uh, 0, 0,3 0, 0,3 so here are the new calculations we are going to use right the question let's go to the question the question said draw and label a new system of access which should produce a straight line graph that new system of access is going to be the system of acceleration it's going to be acceleration versus versus the inverse of mass okay this is the new graph we have to draw and plot do the necessary calculations here are the calculations for each of the different cases here is the first one this is the second reading and this is for the third reading and then obviously we include it in the table um, plot the points and cache the graph so once more i'm going to um, copy the axis quickly and i'll be back with you in one minute okay guys here we are now we have the axis in the y axis we're going to represent acceleration and in the y in the x axis we're going to represent the inverse of the mass which was calculated here so let's do the plotting this is not very accurate you can do it more accurate with a graph paper at home or with a computer in excel but we're going to do it just as accurate as we can okay so the first point here we have for the x one and for the um, y zero comma nine six so one for the x is going to be here and zero comma nine six for the y it's going to be plus minus there it's not accurate um hundred percent okay the second point we're going to plot is zero comma five for the x and zero comma four nine for the y zero comma five for the x and zero comma uh, four nine for the y is uh, near there and the, and the last point is 0, 0,3 for the x and 0, 0,31 for the y. 0, 0,3 and 0, 0,3 is going to be plus minus d. Okay, this is a 0, 0,3. This one is 0, 0,5. So that is the point. Now you do a best fit line. It is a straight line that cross where the most density of points are. And you can see here, this is almost a straight line so here is the um, straight line that we are going to draw that is the graph that they are requested in question um 1.1 okay i hope it's clear you can always ask question if it's not and you don't understand question 1.2 question 1.2 now question 1.2 i put it a little bit further down because of all the uh, information so I state the relationship between acceleration and the mass of the object so the relationship is the acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass of the object when f net is constant this is important so this is the relationship between acceleration and mass determine the gradient of the graph sketch in the question um, above now for the gradient of the graph you should come and use the uh, line not the points but the line however we can use um, the points in this case we can use the points in this case um, which is not very difficult let's let's see okay so for the gradient remember the gradient is equal to the change in the y minus the change in the x all right so this is the final point in y minus the initial point in y divided by the final x minus the initial x and then if we go into the table we are going to use the table even though the most correct is to use the graph in the y we have in 0 comma 96 0 comma 96 that was the first point or the last point and the first one was um uh, 0 0,31 even though this graph is going to zero so you can use the final as zero so let's use the final as zero minus zero and then for the x the other point is um one and zero 
is 1 and 0. And when you do the calculation, the answer is 0, 0,9 six kilograms meters per second square All right but we don't have to do the unit is not important right now they say determine the gradient of the graph so the gradient of the graph is just this answer here okay now 1.4 and last one and last one state in words Newton's second law of motion when a net force acts on an object, the object will accelerate in the direction of the net force. The acceleration is directly proportional to the net force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object okay all right so this is the question thank you very much for watching i hope it is clear you can always um, ask questions go back and um, i'm really sorry about my my voice is really damaged um, I hope next time is better. Thank you very much. Good luck.